of what? Lord, we bless you for that which you will do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Koinonia is the place of hunger. You must be hungry to find expression in this place. This is the place for those who know that there is something more. There is always something more. The character of God is such that when he meets you, he feels your current hunger and leaves you with a greater one. And that's what pushes you back to pursue him. Lord, you are everything that we have. You are everything. You are everything. You are everything. I'd like you to pray just one prayer before you sit down. Say, Lord, you have my all. If peradventure I have taken part of me and shared it with any other thing aside from you, I repent. Lift your voice. This is not the time to look at your neighbor. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord Lord I will worship you nothing has to me sing I will lay down my idols and thrones that I have made and all that has taken my heart listen there are many things that have ways of captivating the heart of man but Lord we will bow something in our lives that has never been done before tonight in the name of Jesus let this not be church as usual in the mighty name of Jesus open up your capacity to receive there is more the Holy Ghost can do in and through your life this is not the best of you Jesus, more of you, more of you, truly more of you, more of you, Jesus, more of you. Sit down if you can. Let's get to the word. All about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Yes, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. It's all Psalms 139. The last few weeks we've been having unusual angelic activities in our midst. And every time there is an unusual activity of angels, it is because of prophetic things that the Lord is doing in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. Thank you. If there is any if there is any prayer I have for you 
says that nothing will take his place in your life if there is any prayer I won't pray for you for a car or for a house or for a husband those things are I will insult you if I pray for you for those things when you have him I'm telling you you have everything you see, many of you may sit down, you're wondering why, why does it look like God is all? It's one thing to be born again, but it's another thing to be addicted. Totally, totally, totally. Where you are not just giving him your hands or your lips, but he takes a hold of your life. You're not just saying, Lord, this is a portion of my heart. But he has everything. If he's not Lord of all, then he's not even interested in being Lord. And this is what we seek to cultivate in our hearts. Your intimacy with the Holy Spirit will make many things happen for you in life. See, let me tell you something. If many people ever knew that the secret of what they were looking for is hidden in the person of the Holy Spirit men will stop chasing after shadows do you know that the Holy Spirit made Jesus the Christ do you know that the Holy Spirit empowered the patriarchs and the prophets of old see I want the Holy Spirit to be real to you he's not just some textbook or some wind or fire the Holy Spirit is a person when you know him you are the greatest man in the universe I'll forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you forever Lord, I'll forever be chasing after you. When men chase after so many things, I'll be chasing after you. This is my commitment. That I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. Hallelujah. I have a message tonight that I pray will touch your heart and cause you to love God like never before. Hallelujah. Tonight I want us to pray. So I'll just teach very briefly. I'm teaching tonight on what I title The Evidence of Genuine Intimacy with God. The Evidence of genuine intimacy the evidence our call as believers listen to me please listen let me say it loud and clear to the hearing of everyone God's priority in life, listen, his priority for you is not to give you a certificate or a husband or a wife or a car or breakthrough or marriage. He wants to bless you with all of these things. But listen to me. His priority is that you will know him. The primary call of a believer is that you conform to the stature, the character, the fullness of the measure of Christ. This is what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12. It was on account of this assignment he gave gifts unto men, some apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, for the equipping of the saints that they the saints will come into this oneness hallelujah 
if your priority listen if your pursuit for god is tied to anything other than him there is a rude disappointment waiting for you at the end of the journey i assure you hallelujah there's so many people who chase god because of the problems in their families or the 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 challenges in society or fear because of the insecurity but you must pursue him for who he is so our call write it our call as christians is to number one conform conform to the character the stature the nature to conform and then number two in partnership with the holy spirit to be an extension of the ministry of jesus upon the earth in partnership with the holy spirit this is why we call this koinonia intimacy our intimacy with the holy spirit brings us to a place of oneness we know his ways listen listen the greatest thing you should celebrate in koinonia is not the miracles thank god for the wonderful miracles and the works of jesus but did you know that a man can just have gifts and really not know god the bible says he showed his way to moses but his acts to the nation of israel we live in a generation where men and women are captivated and there's a place for the miraculous it's God's biblical tool for publicity that men will come and see what Jesus is doing of his acts to know him this is where the men are separated from the boys because knowing God comes with a price it's not cheap it's not free it will constrain you and it will cost you something it will cost you to lay aside your ambition it will cost you to lay aside a lot of things because you will not share his place with any other but when you do, happy are you because in it you will find life. You will find true fulfillment. Hallelujah. I've always wondered why certain people seem to have a depth of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. When you come around them, you are captured immediately by a hunger for god hallelujah there are certain people like that they must not be praying once you come around just the circumference of their presence there is a hunger that captures you you go back crying their presence introduces a reality the existence of a personality they give life to this mystery called God in the earth realm when you look at them the way they speak there's something about their life they don't look like humans they may even be cracking jokes but there is a oneness there is an evidence hallelujah there are several believers that claim they know the holy spirit we live in a generation where everyone believes they know the holy spirit but then if i know pastor jakes there should be an evidence of our friendship and our oneness is that correct there's no evidence in the life of many believers that they have genuine intimacy with the holy spirit we talk we sing we call his name take your place take your place who is the yo who is the person you are talking about let me tell you something many people do not desire to really know god beyond the nominal level of christianity and the average christian in nigeria has a crippled understanding and desire for God. 
there's no platform to put a fire for God the average church in this country teaches us that once you just know the basic principles of God that are responsible for getting life moving on that's all right and while that is true and that is good those are the fundamentals sometimes we run into the mistake of camping around the God who was but we forget that there are other dimensions the God who is and even the one who is to come he said holy is the Lord God who was but he didn't just stop in his greatness of yesterday he's ever unfolding and he requires that men begin to seek him the God who is a revelation of that which he seeks to communicate to his people in the now and that there is more to come in Ezekiel Ezekiel saw the cherubims crying holy right until revelation in the isle of patmos john saw them and they had not stopped how many hundreds of years they were still calling because every time they will see a new dimension of him that will compel them to worship and so it's very sad when you see the average christian in nigeria there is this coldness i'm not talking of backsliding i'm talking of a lack of passion and a desire to see that there can be more in God hallelujah so many people sit down and we are satisfied with where we are and even when we sing songs like more of you when we sing songs like I love you when we sing songs like show me more you know all these kinds of things we really do not mean it from the depths of our hearts you know why because there is no evidence There is no evidence the Lord began to talk to me and he said son there should be evidence evidence listen if you know how majestic the presence of God is let me tell you something there must be a signature upon your life that you are a man of his presence this is what brings the anointing of the Holy Ghost many people try to look for the anointing now without the Holy Spirit himself hallelujah but god designed it in such a way that authentic grace is a derivative of your intimacy with the holy spirit is your reward for encountering him when angels begin to manifest in this place there is an evidence in the earth realm that shows that there are angelic activities and so i i am very disturbed about a believer who is seemingly born again and filled with the Holy Ghost seemingly progressing in God and then there is no evidence hallelujah so many people sing all kinds of songs so many people pray for hours so many people spend time roaming around but there is no evidence in their lives if Jake's has a perfume and I hug him and I hold him or I wear his clothes for long is it true that when I pass you you will know hallelujah shouldn't there be a fragrance of his majesty shouldn't there be a deposit a leftover a sign that you were with him the Bible says the disciples were with Jesus to the point that their physical appearances were altered Judas had to use a kiss to identify who was Jesus among them they had come into oneness koinonia the bible says when they saw peter speaking to the jerusalem council they looked at him and they said is this not a fisherman but he had assumed a level of oneness with his master that he had begun to manifest like him how many of you have seen two people who are together a protege and a mentor and later you see him begin to talk like that person act like that person that is a symbol hallelujah you can just hear a man of god preach and you know this is a pastor in living faith or this is a pastor in deeper life there is an evidence i'm asking you a question tonight what is your evidence what evidence do you have to convince the world that you are truly a man that has the presence of god upon your life there must be a genuine evidence if it is true 
that your prayer is to God Almighty if it is true that you love him the way you sing if it is true that you have passion should there not be a signature in your life that demonstrates to the world the name Christian was an encapsulation that was giving us an evidence a symbol certain people behave like Jesus so much so that they were given a name Christian every Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday we have millions of people all over Nigeria trooping to different churches different camps different um, 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 places of worship auditoriums and you ask them where are you going to they say I'm going to worship they've been doing that for years 10 years 20 years they've given birth to children but you look at their life there is no evidence of genuine intimacy they pray in tongues they call his name they stand on stage and we preachers do it you say holy spirit the one i know the one i love but there is a distance in between you and the person you are talking about have you seen anybody claim to know a stranger and the way the person is talking you know this person is not used to this stranger or this person is not used to the person he's talking about many people truly do not know the Holy Spirit because when you know him I used to hear Catherine Kuhlman cry Benny Hinn said it that Catherine Kuhlman used to cry and say he's all that I have He's my best friend. It doesn't make sense until you have encountered him. Listen, let me tell you something. When Jesus appeared to me, I knew why the apostles loved him to death. Hallelujah. I knew why these guys ran with a passion for God. The Bible says, even in Hebrews 11, that some people had the opportunity to escape, but they refused as a demonstration of their commitment to him. What is your evidence? We sing beautiful songs about his presence and his majesty. Beautiful songs. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. Breathe on me, I look to you for life. Every time you're singing, people know if you really know the person you are talking about. You can come and sing, you can come and shout, you can come and preach, you can jump around. But I'm telling you the truth, there is an evidence. And tonight I'm going to show you, we'll be examining from, our, from God's word. And I trust that this brief examination will create a passion in us. Because at the end of it, some of us will find out that we need to go back into the place of genuine hunger. We either left God on the way in pursuit for many things. Hallelujah. There must be an evidence. The first thing that happens when you begin to expose yourself to the presence and the glory of God in the glory I will stand I will stand and lift my hands in the glory I'll receive every miracle you have for me it's in your glory i will stand lord i will stand and i will lift my hands in your glory I'll receive every miracle that you have for me 
So take my heart and mold it. Take my mind. This is my prayer, Lord. Transform it. Take my will tonight. Conform it to yours. To yours. Oh Lord, this is our prayer tonight. Take our hearts and mold it. Take our minds, Lord. Transform it. Take our will. Conform it. Bible calls him it says that God is light and in him there is no shadow of turning so when you truly step into the light of his glory listen the first evidence listen is that there is an exposition of the true state of your heart there is an unveiling there is a revealing of who you truly are in the light of him until you go to his presence whatever you call yourself you are telling lies his presence the bible says that he is the revealer the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart until you have encountered the glory of god you truly do not know your true state isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 the bible says in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah although a prophet i saw the lord he said when i saw the lord i saw him high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple and the bible says when isaiah saw these things he said woe is me if anyone had told him before that encounter that woe is you isaiah he would have insulted the person but the glory of god reveals the true state that men cannot see that pulpit can hide are you listening to me that suits can hide that grammar and english can hide the glory of god opens up the true you and reveals to you the true state of your heart this is how you know one who is a man with intimacy with the holy ghost he exposes the state of your heart and brings you to a point where you find out that you truly are inadequate without him regardless of what your revelation of your authority is you come to a point where you realize that god if you do not have mercy on me then i am a dead man without you this is what brings these kinds of songs all about you it's all about you it's all about you Jesus for many years I was preaching doing great things signs and wonders and miracles but the day Jesus appeared to me I think for over a period of one year I was not myself it was as if I was the most filthy person on the earth now it's impossible to describe some of these things his majestic presence when you stand before him and see him in the beauty of his holiness his majestic presence it does something to you you will never be the same let me tell you something no matter how hardened you are no matter how hardened you are the human spirit was designed to respond to the majestic presence of his maker and if you truly encounter his presence something will happen radically in your life this issue of coming to church and loving God and not seeing a need for change and adjustment is a sign of the absence of the presence of God hallelujah Psalms 139 let's look at a few scriptures 
I want to be very brief so we can pray. This is not a teaching, really. It's just an exhortation. Psalms 139 verse 23. The psalmist, a man who we know to be a man of his presence, had this to say. 139 verse 23. Search me, O God. Stop. Look up. Do you know what it takes for a man to open up himself and say, God, probe me in this country? When they told politicians that they want to probe them and find out their accounts, did they agree? You know the level of honesty and brokenness it takes for a king to open up himself before God and say, Lord, search me. He says, search me, O oh God. I'm not hiding it from you. Search me. People can call me names. People can call me a great person. But before you search me, this is an evidence. An evidence of genuine intimacy with the presence of God. That consistently you are aware of your inadequacy. Not unto guilt and condemnation. Are you listening to me? But unto a passion imparting upon you reverence and genuine respect for his majesty is that an evidence in your life if that has not happened in your life then you see that there is no genuine intimacy with the holy spirit like you claim there is no hiding it this is a clear universal litmus test it should work for everybody because the more you see him the bible says you are changed but for you to be changed god will show you your present state and compare it with his own and you will be compelled man only embraces change if you show him that what is about to embrace is greater than what he's living otherwise he will not leave it hallelujah so you must see a higher light the bible says when saul was on his way to damascus full of passion he was going to want kill the christians the Bible says a light a light appeared to him in an instant Saul said Lord he called him Lord that's the byproduct of an encounter that a man who has been hardened who went to collect permission to kill people in a moment this is what happens when an unbeliever comes to sit down in a place if that environment has genuine intimacy with the holy spirit he should not leave that person the same you see the reason why many christians do not have a genuine fire for god we sit around unbelievers and there is no sign whatsoever so it's either god is not there or there's something wrong with us hallelujah jesus met the samaritan woman just sitting with her in a little conversation what happened the glory of God wrapped her in such a way and a manner the Bible says she even forgot about the issue of fetching water and ran to the city and began to say come and see a man who has told me all about me presence of God the glory of God a symbol that your heart is open at all times and you say Lord search my heart in other words i'm ready to listen to anything you tell me if you tell me that there is lost hidden in my heart is true you are not a liar if you tell me that there is a state of wickedness hidden in my heart you are true hallelujah it takes a level of genuine brokenness and love for god to come to a point where god can probe your life and you are not ashamed of what the result of his findings will be because we live in a world of psychophancy and lies are you listening to me men have itching ears wanting to hear only what they want it takes men who love god genuinely especially for those of us in ministry when you are in ministry a lot of times our churches are full of liars and psychophants men who always want to say everything the man of God is stealing. He's a wonderful, lovely man of God. The man of God is declaring a counsel that is not consistent with God. He's a wonderful man of God. The man of God is sleeping around and doing everything. He's a wonderful man of God. Because it's, it takes a level of brokenness. And here the psalmist shows us one symbol, one evidence of a genuine encounter with the presence of God. Search me, O God. And know my heart. 
you know what it means commune with my heart the same word that used for a man knowing a woman know my heart relate with my heart oh god i want to know what your verdict is concerning my heart he says and if there is any wicked way in me he said what lead me out of it this is the first evidence of a genuine encounter genuine intimacy when your intimacy with the holy ghost is genuine this is one of the evidences that you show let me tell you something a man of the secret place will never struggle with a habit or challenge for long you watch him you see something you don't like in a few months he's gone that's a symbol that is a man that understands the power of intimacy with the holy spirit because if you truly have a secret place and you have ears to hear because some people don't have ears the bible says he that has an ear that means some people don't have it he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the church many of us have been so hardened towards the dealings of god every time we go to pray listen and you see this affects your kind of prayer we must graduate from this childish need driven christianity and step into a place of genuine maturity that will bring us power and grace god i pray for myself I pray for my mother. I pray for my father. I pray for my this. I pray for my dad. Lord, do this and that. If my auntie doesn't give me money, she won't sleep. I command arrows of restlessness. What kind of thing is that? That's the average petition of the church. Listen, let me tell you something. If that is the kind of heritage we want to pass to our children, then the church is going to have a serious problem in the next five to ten years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John Knox prayed over Scotland and he turned and was not talking about himself. He said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. This is someone's prayer point. Give me Scotland or I die. That's a level of brokenness and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Where God's own need becomes your driving force, not, no longer your own. You have so traded away your personal desire and passion to take up that of His Majesty and that becomes your prayer point all you are concerned about in the place of prayer is lord what is your habit and i will run in synchrony hallelujah you go and read many books that are written on prayer very few of them are written on prayer for mature believers most of them is just how to get your needs met which is wonderful but let me tell you something you cannot tie your pursuit for god on just your needs be met no god is bigger than that this is the reason why many people's christianity does not last hallelujah one day you are checking an album and you see your father's picture and you see that he was a prayer secretary of one fellowship in 1971 and there's the man in the beer parlor now what happened because the bible says if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do faulty foundation christianity that is a a derivative of hunger not genuine passion and that's the platform on which many altar calls are made in nigeria hallelujah so we tell people come this is an end to all your sorrow listen to me i hope you know i believe in the works of jesus christ I believe in the blessings that come we preach it here but this is not god's priority god's priority is that men will come out of a sincere need for god in their lives that's the kind of salvation that will last when you tell someone to come and you are giving him a bet that after six months his life will change and he gives his life to christ and there is someone in their family dies after two weeks he begins to question your your bait to the kingdom hallelujah and you promise the person that the wave is five or six carryover courses and his final result came out and we were still on the board and he has to take it again at that point the person does not see a need to pursue god again you see that because you have you have brought god to be an errand boy 
whose job is to go and bring things according to our lust and those are the kinds of people the bible says that god cannot commit the true riches of heaven because they will disappoint god they are the kind of people that will never walk in authentic power you know why it will destroy them hear me i tell you the truth if you truly truly want to walk in glory you must open up your heart for god to search i do this all the time people call me names people say a lot of good things thank god for that i receive text messages all the time sometimes i pick up the text messages and i drop it on the floor and i lie down on the carpet i say lord this is deceitful because it's not true affect my life breathe on me lord i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you That you refuse to let see at that point the words and the commendations of men have no hold over your life again whether they call you bishop stand or apostle stand or prophet stand or whatever it is those things have no hold over you that means he has had your heart lord i give you my heart Many people gave him his hands. Some gave him some fingers. Some gave him one part of their ears. The other part is in Babylon. One has entered. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. See, those that wrote these songs were not looking for money. They were not trying to produce album to look for money. They had a genuine passion and out of the overflow of their personal hunger they wanted to infect the world with that hunger in an attempt to bring men to the realm that they were relating with god but right now we have all kinds of people singing these songs and you know that their hearts are not open let me tell you something the first evidence of an open heart is the complete destruction of pride the first evidence that you have opened up your heart because pride is usually hitched on something you know or you can do the moment you open your heart the first thing god does is to kick out anything that is not him have your way in me that you open up your heart and say lord men call me a great man but what is your what is your analysis hallelujah men call you a great servant of god men call you a great this and that great this and that you see let me tell you something in all sincerity i know i can't stop it but i fear greatly when people begin to give all kinds of commendations because those things can be deceitful listen the greatest enemy of success is the last one you had not failure failure has never made anybody a failure failure always gives you reason to move higher but the last success you had brings about complacency and a sense of relaxation. Any man who is a man of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, there is always more. You are always dissatisfied with where you are and there is a genuine passion to rise higher. It's all about you, Jesus. Whether on stage, whether as a celebrity, he's got your heart you are not saying lord let me keep my heart with you like a bank and when i get to a point where i feel i do not need you i come back and i say lord that heart i gave you is there any can i give you money and collect the heart will your christianity last in the face of honor will it last when all your financial needs are met and 80% of your prayer request is gone will it last when the husband finally comes now will it last when the child do you know that for many people the lifetime of their Christianity is when they receive a, a result the moment a result comes that's it no more hunger hallelujah 
one of our dear ladies in this place was speaking with me a few days ago and was telling me that while she was on campus she was the one who was wayward and not serious and there was a fiery sister when i say fiery i mean genuine fire she was the one who used to hold her hands and say go and pray go and do this go and do that and she told me she said do you know this lady right now that she went to her house and she saw another man married man big man with his wife alive and healthy nothing has happened the wife is at home with the children hallelujah and her small house the man came here to visit her what suddenly happens to it do you know the level of fall it takes for you to forget where you started with god that's a level of absence of intimacy for a long time to a point that the bible says your conscience has been seared with fire that a man falls from a great height to an extent that you who was making a vow you see that's why when you say lord i live for you god will say i'm not yet sure i'm not yet sure open up your heart many of us have tendencies that are enshrined in our heart the day one million enters your hand god will have to use prophetic words to beg you and say remember i'm alive many of us have not tasted honor you don't know what it means for people to hold your bible and move around and say the man of this and that and that and that and you are like so there is a possibility to live a higher level of life like this can god still find your commitment will money or fame or power or any of these things affect your prayer life and affect your sacrifice can you still go down on your knees when you are wearing a designer's of one million say kai this carpet is rough the same carpet you knelt down in to bring you the grace and the breakthrough when you were taking gary and adding all of this you had energy but now you eat chicken you take pasta and every kind of thing italian dishes those italian dishes wiped out the presence of god from your life the bible says whose god is their belly take what i'm saying very seriously tonight because the kind of church we have is the type that if god does not bring breakthrough after one year many christians are leaving him they are packing their load god is like one of the many things they are trying hallelujah you know there's this game people used to play ladies i pass here no way i pass here no way so people pass different things and then they came to jesus i pass here once there's no way they they followed they are looking for something else that's why people resolve to go to herbal medicine when it looks like it's a sign see it's a depth of your conviction when you try and try they say kai come home come home they say let's watch and see what god will do i wouldn't trade you for silver or gold i wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are you are my So if you are here and peradventure you became a christian because of these many reasons you'll be born again afresh tonight and get serious because that thing you did was not born again hallelujah oh god if you don't give my sister a husband after two weeks i know you are not lord you mean it job said though he slay me yet will i praise him listen i want your christianity to be rooted on an unshakable foundation that's why many of you have seen some of your mothers i've said it here and here again many of them loved god that's why in the height of their blessings and everything you still see them sing songs and when there's a bereavement when because you see the kind of christianity that we are teaching the church is such that what do you tell a family that has been bereaved right now i believe in miracles i believe in raising the dead but not every dead person will rise up and you will have to console a dying family so what will you say you enter there and say they don't have faith many pastors do not have messages for bereaved people many pastors don't have messages for people 
people in failure because they have pretended to divorce themselves from those experiences the the luxury of the palace have made them like esther to forget the needs of the people they were called to serve they have intercourse with the king's meat and forgotten the dignity of holiness i pray that none of us will become those kind of people i told god anything i've said it i don't know how many times and i mean it anything that you're going to give me and i cannot give you back I put a prophecy in the air that it should never come to me. Never. And I mean it from the depths of my heart. When I say anything, let your mind grow wild, including my life. Anything. Do you love him that much? Many people want power. You want grace. But God will search your heart. So number one, it exposes your heart. A heart that is exposed to the scrutiny of God. Tonight we are going to open up ourselves and you cry. Because there are many of us, the way we are going, you may not last in your journey. It's not a curse. It's not a bad statement. But we are not hinged on a foundation that is on Christ. Hallelujah. Write the following scriptures down. You read them. We don't have time. Psalms 51 verse 10. Matthew 13 verse 25 when you are truly growing John 15 verse 2 it says he that beareth fruit my father will prune so pruning is a sign that you are bearing fruit Bible says do not despise the chastening of the Lord see let me tell you something believers I'm telling you from today and forever you must dedicate time for what I call soul searching with God periodically in your life. I know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But do you know the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want your Christian experience to be authentic. I cry to God every time it doesn't make me guilty it doesn't make me weak but it makes me strong because in my weakness I'm ever conscious of his power and so every time I make any boast I make it out of the understanding that I'm strengthened in my inner man by his grace number two and a byproduct let me finish up with number one you will find out you are walking in character and in the fruit of the spirit when God deals with your heart it doesn't happen at once it happens level by level look at me let me tell you something come my brother you see this gentleman listen this guy can be born again filled with the Holy Ghost are you listening to me he can be walking in signs and wonders but there are issues in his heart God will not deal with it yet because at that level the dealings will be too heavy and it will discourage his journey. Are you listening to me? So God will just keep quiet as if there is nothing there. This is what a lot of believers mistake him. And they think God is careless. Do you realize the Bible says in Matthew, I gave you the scripture. Matthew 13 verse 25. We will not talk about that because of time. The Bible says that when men slept, what happened? They sowed tears among the wheat. And when they got up, the disciples told the master in that parable they said should we remove he said no 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 because as you are doing that the 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 wheat is still tender are you listening to me and you may not differentiate the wheat and the tear so if you pull it at that point you may destroy innocent things so if god begins to hammer on some things in your life it may be too drastic and it will discourage you so god will allow you to continue so you still have a lot of things that are not consistent with the way of God. There's pride, there's arrogance, there's everything, but you are still seeing the anointing. And every time you go to pray, God doesn't talk to you about it. Hallelujah. Then one day when you grow firm enough to be able to take that level of dealing, now you are praying suddenly. You are praying and you see God begin to tell you, okay, let's deal with this problem of pride or let's deal with this problem of loss. And you are saying, Lord, me, lost. I forgot about the issue of pride or these sins. And God will say, really? Do you trust me? And then God will expose yourself to you. 
and you will see and you say lord have mercy upon me and then he will grant you grace and empower you up you go to a higher realm the spirit this is how men grow this is what the bible calls spiritual growth what many people are doing is numerical advancement in the earth realm not spiritual growth they are going around jericho forever and they are not growing number two let's hurry up when you have genuine intimacy with the holy spirit it will conquer unbelief permanently in your life communion is the true key to activating the faith of the son of god in your life for you cannot trust a man you do not know see faith was not designed just to stand it has to be faith in something or someone and the degree to which you know that someone is a degree to which you can stand look at me we have been relating for a while correct week after week months after months years after years based on that there are some things i can tell you if i tell you right now um this is my daughter i mean physical daughter you just laugh why because you know me correct if this place were full of visitors and i tell them come little girl this is my daughter they say ah, ah can you imagine now you are looking as young guys as if she's your younger sister i can afford to mislead people based on their lack of knowledge of me correct but when knowing me gives them an opportunity to walk with me and ascertain certain things about me over time are you listening to me this is why the place of prayer is the place where the shell of the word breaks forth and releases genuine faith did you hear the testimony of our sister she said she has boldness now let me tell you that boldness came not just by studying the word it came by prayer when you study the word and you go to the place of prayer it gives you boldness the bible says the apostles in acts chapter 4 were praying it was in prayer they asked god they said grant us boldness and so the lord begins to talk to you and while you are praying one scripture that you have been studying hits your spirit and a light come and there is a level there is a reality hallelujah suddenly you are praying or you are in the place of intimacy of worship with the spirit and you begin to hear certain sounds or you begin to see signs of angels will you ever disbelieve that there are angels it has what it has solidified your conviction you see one of the reasons why you hear us speak like this is because we are speaking from a depth of conviction there have been experiences that have crystallized our conviction hallelujah what experience do you have that has solidified your, your, your Christian experience hallelujah thank you Jesus communion is the key to conquering unbelief it does that by exposing your spirit to the atmosphere of God's reality you need to experience God's reality to know that he is able i like that song that says god is able to do just what he says he will do but you listen you must have a real experience if your sister has been pregnant and they tell you that the baby is so big and they have to cut her open you need a miracle correct at that point a dimension of god is about to be experienced hallelujah if it so happens that by whatever supernatural means she gives birth now the next time you hear someone prophesying and say in the name of jesus we command impossible births to happen will you believe your faith has been strengthened you see how experiences crystallize our knowledge of god many of us lack the sufficient experiences why do we call someone a general and someone a captain what's the difference what's the difference when the captain hears the sound of a gun, bah, he can panic and he can do all of this. And the general laughs. 
he said they've even pointed gun at me one day i didn't die so all this nonsense you are doing let me tell you something the psalmist says though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil it takes a man are you listening to me whose convictions about god has been strong so all those things run to the village run to this run to this air eh, let's add christianity and this is a sign that you are not convicted he said but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded hallelujah thank you jesus number three the third evidence of genuine intimacy is freshness of insight and revelation freshness don't tell me you are in intimacy with god and you will not have a message let me tell you something when in all sincerity when i hear men of god come on stage and say well i didn't prepare for this message i really don't even know what to say uh, whatever let's just look at something let me tell you in all sincerity that is a sign that is such a sign of lack of intimacy with the holy spirit because at every time you encounter the Holy Spirit, there is a message. If I, if I have a way of planning for Koinonia to meet every day, every day, because according to the syllables that we have to cover, we are far behind. Sometimes people meet me and say, ah, you just finish a ministration, you go for another one, you minister, and then you go and you are talking about different things. And many people do not know that many of my messages are experiences. I share some of them with you to encourage you. Sometimes I'm sleeping, minding myself, having a sound sleep. And then I see things in the spirit and I wake up and God tells me, shit. That's how messages like commanding results and so on and so forth came. These things were not just rehearsals. When you're a man of the secret, can I tell you something? When you're a man of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, there is freshness. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. And thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of what my enemies ah i'm quoting the wrong scripture i thought i'll find what i want in that scripture let's go to psalm psalm what have i quoted now let's go to psalm one blessed is the man who does not yes that's the scripture who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers standing sitting walking all they are wrong but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that lord doth he meditate day as a result what will happen he shall be like a tree that is what other trees have to wait for rainy season but this other tree is planted by the rivers as a result it yields its fruit in season and whose leaves does not wither freshness not necessarily newness freshness that's why you can hear people like kenneth e hagin teaching on faith for over 30 years and you have series and series every time a message goes stale it's a sign that it did not come out from the bowels of the spirit because if it comes out it will come with a touch of eternity even if you've heard it before it will come with a freshness like the dew of heaven how many mornings have you had in your life morning and evening many isn't it but everyone comes fresh that's how it because it comes from a realm of eternity there's no morning that will bore you you say guy i've had um maybe i'm 30 years or i'm 40 years and i've had so many mornings or many mm -mm. they come from a fresh realm every time you sleep even after 30 or 40 years you still look forward to that's why the bible tied the message of god to the morning he said they are new many of us lack freshness in our lives you hear someone speaking and you know that this is the only message that he said since five years ago and that's why you hear people talk about the god who was 
Ah, I remember we were in a crusade in 1971 and God did this and that. And I remember the Lord told me something five years ago. The Lord did this. What is God telling you now? Did he run away? Say after me, freshness. Whether a man, a ministry, an organization, stagnation is a sign of the absence of the presence of God. There should be freshness. Suddenly, when you think you have come to the end of everything you know, suddenly. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says the path of the just is what? As a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. That means if I look at you, Pastor Steve, in 2000 and maybe six or seven, by the time I see you in 2014, I should see some an evidence in your life that shows me you have been in the presence of God. How many of you have seen a little child that maybe when you came to school or maybe didn't see the person for five years, and the next thing you turn and ah, you even see the guy has one small beard. I say ah, Bala, you mean this? Now our children have become men. That's a sign that he's alive. Correct? That's a sign that he's alive. Those that you see them looking the same way after 20 years, you know that there's a problem. Because that's not the normal way people should be. Correct? There's a problem. Maybe a health problem, genetic mutation or whatever, but there is a problem. So, when you tell me that you got born again, and after one solid year listening to the word of God praying engaging yourself in the kingdom and there is no evidence there is no freshness in your life you can't share anything you cannot lead a small prayer meeting hallelujah there are so many people after one year two years three months four months they say just share with us something briefly and you want to enter the Christ? Hey, 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 God, what will I? I understand there's, there's that initial fear. It's not a fear. It should not be a fear of lack of the presence of God. It should be that, okay, I've not done it before. But when you stand there, suddenly grace will come upon you. If you don't deny God in the secret, he will never disappoint you in the open. You know why God disappoints many men of God? Because they don't know him in the secret. We can come and chorus all kinds of names. Lily of the lion of the, uh, the tribe of Judah, lily of the valley, what and what, rose of Sharon, uh, uh, silver or gold, all kinds of names. My God, you promised me you wouldn't disappoint me. And God is saying, Me? When? Asking the angels, when did we say, when did we say, who sent this guy? But when you are a man or a woman of the secret place, you can stand and sing and say i know my god will answer me this is why we have the confidence to organize miracle services this is how we have the confidence to gather people every week because we are certain he said that which i tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountaintop that's why he blesses us with new songs if you leave koinonia after three or four months you will come and hear a new song it's a sign of freshness some of these songs come through dreams some of these songs come through people in the worship team some come through congregations you not any church or denomination or 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 group of believers where god is there there are fresh things the bible says sing unto the lord a new song because he expects that his presence should give you a new experience that should produce new things thank you jesus freshness 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 psalm 36 verse 9 kabala rabo shanda krati salamo kasi adaba ambrosa secreti shala kusibana hasi adaba lord i love your presence i love that song i love i love i love your presence i love i love I love your words. What's the other part? At least I'm talking to God, not you. Psalm 36 verse what? 9. For with thee is the fountain of light. See, he said, in thy light do 
do we see light that means when you see his light you will have direction the shadow of god is not black his shadow itself is light so he says you have you are the fountain of life as a derivative of your light if we are truly with you then we should not walk in darkness hallelujah number four and i'll stop here the fourth thing you receive or the fourth evidence of genuine intimacy is authentic unction and authority in the spirit what did i say authentic unction has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with men of god if you actually meet god and his power dimension does not rub off on you it's not god you met find out the name of that person you met because he's a habali somewhere if he's god the god of israel the bible says the mountains keep like rams in his presence the majestic one who with the breath of his nostrils butter the red sea and you are spending time day after day week after week his power dimension that unction of the spirit will rub off on you that's why you see many people they don't even know let me tell you something when i began my pursuit for god i was not looking for power i'm not sure any of us was looking for power we used to just go and pray and fellowship we didn't even know the anointing was on us i'll never forget Ejimi. when it comes to things like this i like using him demonstration students were in sunday school building he had been angry because he was laying hands laying hands nothing is happening and every time you come back and complain you know Ejimi can be very dramatic and that very day we prayed and he laid hands on the lady and she started moving back small you can oh my god you can imagine the white smile he didn't carry that hand away he laid it there i saw one gentleman doing it in chapel one day i entered i didn't stop him sometimes just leave the people it's an encouragement you don't know how they've suffered looking for that sign hallelujah and so when you touch the lady and she's almost falling you now move from your secret place and come out where everybody can see and say now the power of god will move and act all kinds of drama and god will stop you it's an encouragement a day will come you draw your ears oh, that's too much let's go back to work a day should come when you pray for the sick and someone can come back with a testimony you've prayed for one thousand people nobody got healed you you are not in the presence of god there must be an evidence the bible says elijah prayed there was no rain he prayed again there was no rain at the seventh time what happened there was an evidence let me tell you something if it is the genuine presence of god an evidence must show a day will come you will stand close to someone who is possessed and without talking suddenly you see the demon just manifest and you say go leave the person in the name of jesus this is how we grew up that's why our prayer lives were exciting because we're we're wondering what new will god do today hallelujah i remember that time every night was getting people filled with the holy spirit we're so happy i remember one time a jimmy gathered his his classmates and brought them industrial design gathered all of them and said come and see what god will do with you this night gathered them and brought them to chapel we loved prayer because prayer was not this boring thing i see people do it was it we looked forward to exciting times and he was going to pray for them after preaching a sound message prayed for them nothing happened they were tired they tried and tried again that day when we were going home jimmy was angry he said god would have at least that he knew what would have happened to their faith if, if, if they didn't speak at least they would have fallen But today by the grace of god we didn't start by speaking over congregations and having the power of god fall on people we started step by step but that step was an evidence that encouraged us and we said man these tongues is working oh, let's fire on and we went for crusade my brother when we went for crusade we saw things that encouraged us so oh. rain had not fallen in that land and it fell correct hallelujah 
Zex was the head of council in that time. Bishop was our treasurer. We saw the miracle working power of God. Is your Christianity exciting? It will not be exciting if you are not in the presence of God. There's nothing new. God is not speaking to you. He's not challenging you. God can tell you, go and tell Ella that I will bless her. And that's your first time of the word of knowledge. You look forward to that time. You're shivering. By the time you get there, you've forgotten the message. You have to find one scripture. Oh, when you stand before them. You see, this is your Christian experience being rich. Many people's Christian life is dry and boring. Because you don't look forward to any experience. I always look forward to Friday because I don't even know what God is going to do. Hallelujah. Sometimes people send me messages. Like Grace sent me a message this evening. She told me how that she saw a... A, 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 a vision of the meeting this night I was so excited I said this is the kind of thing I want to hear that one day you were challenged in your health and you say let me try it let me not take drugs this time around if it gets too bad there's chemists they are not locked but let me just try say after me authentic power see whoever you got your power from you will depend on the person for the rest of your life that's why some people can never leave some men of God. Never! Because they have tied their life and their power there. And sometimes pastors, we preach and tell people, by the time you leave me, or you go, or you start your ministry, or you do this, your life will dry away because I'm from the fountain that flows to you. Look, let me tell you something. The Bible says, Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says, it's like the oil that comes from who? The head of Aaron, the priest who is Christ. And out of the overflow of what is in the head is where the body receives. And so your unction should come from the Holy One. He said, ye have an unction, not from a pastor. They can be channels, but the unction comes from the Holy One. Let men and women walk in authentic power. I want to see koinonia people casting out devils. I want to see you heal the sick, doing the works of Jesus. I'm telling you, speaking breakthroughs over our lives, standing to legislate on behalf of heaven. Look at what this lady said. Her testimony blessed me so much. I look forward to times when our testimony on stage will not just be breakthroughs that came as a result of the prophetic declaration, but what God did with our hands. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Say these hands are the hands of Jesus upon the earth filled with the power of the spirit. With it I will do wonders. I will heal the sick. I will cast out devils. I will deliver nations. I am anointed. The presence of God is with me. In the name of Jesus. You must walk conscious of his presence. He is with me. He is with me. This is what gives me confidence. Everywhere I go, he's with me. He's with me. I'm telling you, the word walks. W-A-L-K. W-A-L-K. The word, the Bible says, and God walking with them, confirming the words. There's no disappointment in ministry again. I found the key. It's the presence of God. I found the key. It's the key to the anointing. Is the key to breakthrough God told me if you have me you have everything I am telling you out of his fullness you can speak over the lives and the destinies of people and doors will open that's why he's all I have this is why we celebrate his presence every other thing is temporal but I'm telling you if you have his presence you see why Moses said do not let us depart he said, I know your presence. Your presence brought us thus far. How many of you will pray and say, Lord, do not let your presence depart. The psalmist said, cast me not away from your presence and take not your spirit from me. There must be an evidence in your life. Freshness, unction, authentic power. That you shake every demon and devil disturbing your life. And you tell yourself, as surely as the Lord grants me grace, I can do it. Tonight I'm challenging you, brothers and sisters. The presence of God should be your greatest asset. The presence of God. Commune with the Holy Ghost. 
in the place of prayer in the place of worship in the place of the word in the place of obedience you will find yourself walking in realms you are not prepared for i'm telling you stop chasing after the things that only his presence can give hallelujah who would have known that today by the grace of god we'll be doing the things that we are doing for god many people saw when we started nobody would have known but by his grace by his grace evidence your coming tonight is the evidence that his presence is with us what will men do as the evidence that god is with you how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts 10 38 with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed why for god was with him god is with me anywhere god sends me now there's only one question i'll ask will you go with me if god is going with me that's all that's all i need Many of us do not know the value of God's presence. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. I want you to take it seriously and pray. You are going to say, Lord, your presence. I have left your presence. Many of us only run to God as emergency Christians. Emergency Christians. Lift your voice inside and outside. Lift your voice and pray. Your presence. My greatest asset. I take advantage of the person of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the power of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the favor of the Spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Rapata Krasta la Capre Secretary. Say, Lord, put in me a hunger, a hunger for your presence, a hunger that I will lie down in worship in your presence, soak it in the glory, soak it in the glory. So will you remain fresh, so will you remain powerful. This is a secret I've given you tonight. It's the secret of greatness, the secret of glory, the evidence of genuine intimacy, a life of character, a contrite and a broken heart, conviction through faith. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Grace for prayer, grace for worship, grace for spending time in the presence of God. Say, Lord, open me up to visions, open me up to dreams, prophetic encounters. Make your presence real, make the Holy Ghost real, make the Holy Ghost real. Make the Holy Ghost real in my life. Pray and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hallelujah. freshness unction authentic power character maturity love for god these are parameters that let us know whether god is at work in your life for many of us from today you must make a resolve to let his word reign in you find expression take authority over satan Hallelujah. Now please keep standing. I'm glad to announce to you that we are ready to commence our school of ministry finally.
Come on, you should celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. It's one of the great things God is doing. By the grace of God, Bishop Stan will be directing our school of ministry. It's going to be powerful, four months, intensive weekend programs. Hallelujah. The forms are available. They are free, but limited. We'll take only limited people. You know that God has called you into the ministry or to be an ambassador. I'm not just talking of fivefold pastor. You know that you have a hunger and you want to learn more, to know more. It's a powerful time. We're going to graduate our students. Hallelujah. We're going to have lecturers from different ministries and different people according to the order of grace that God has given them. It's going to be an awesome time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So please don't be emotional about it and just run and come and collect the form and stop someone who is supposed to. Pastors, whether you're already in ministry, we have people coming from different places. That's why we made it a weekend class. Hallelujah. And it's, it's, it's powerful. You've not seen anything like it, I'm telling you. We trust God that we're going to teach and help our students to become all that God has destined for them to be. Are you happy about that? Stretch your hands towards Bishop as a point of contact. We are praying for the school of ministry. Now lift your hands. Lord Wisdom, this is a new thing you are doing in the house and we celebrate you. He's directing it. Pray for him. Unction from the Holy One. In the name of Jesus, say great responsibility to raise and train people. Say Lord, grace. Makatola kariasta pranda kalato Thank you, Jesus. Lord, this will be a place where we raise kingdom ambassadors. Men and women of fire. Men and women who will shake their generation in every area. Ministry, business, politics, governance. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now pray for Pastor Jakes. We've also started our missions. How many of you were in Giwa on Sunday? Let me see your hands. Those who went. Hallelujah. It was a wonderful time. By God's grace, we hope to visit the prisons, secondary schools, police stations, anywhere that can be visited. Hallelujah. We are exposing everyone in Koinonia to practical ministry. Hallelujah. Whether you are, we will focus on our students, but everyone. So we can just come and say, one, two, three, four, five. We are going to go and pray in the secondary school. And we say, Ella. You are the one who is taking the word. Grace, you are the one who will pray for the sick. You will do anything you know, dear. If it doesn't work, you come back on Friday. So let Friday will now become a time when we we'll gather together and everybody will tell us what happened. Hallelujah. How many of you believe in what God is doing? It's a new season for us and we give him all the praise for what he is doing. We thank him for what he's doing in the house and we celebrate the hand of God. It's a sign of his presence. That great presence that has been with us right from the beginning. The angel of the Lord's presence. He's not left us and we thank him. He's left evidences in our midst that authenticate that he is Lord. And Lord, we give you all the glory. You're here, you're not born again. You've not given your heart to Jesus Christ. While standing, tonight can be the night inside and outside. You heard me talking. And the Holy Ghost was speaking to you. Or you've given your heart to the Lord and at one time you found yourself derailing from the things of God. With all the love that we have, now is the time to welcome you and to call you into a genuine fellowship and a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ and His Spirit. Right where you are, I want you to leave your seat and come out here quickly. As the Holy Ghost speaks to you, at the back, everywhere, as the Holy Ghost is talking to you, inside and outside we want to help you come to know the lord jesus christ or you've backslided hallelujah as the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit back there there are people coming I appreciate them they are coming thank you for the courage 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 as the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit back there you need to make a decision for jesus inside and outside for one more minute we'll wait for you there are people like that hallelujah god bless you god bless you young old 
This is what this meeting is about. Hallelujah. Look at these little children coming out to make genuine decisions. You are not clapping when you were their age. What were you doing? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Now, look at me very quickly. I want to lead you to the Lord Jesus. This is the best decision that you would have ever made. Lift your right hand, all of you in front. Say after me very seriously. God bless you, brother. Lift your hands. Say after me, Jesus, I love you. And I believe you died for me. Today, I acknowledge that you are the Savior and the Lord of my life. Save me. Wash my sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm born again. I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus. Father, preserve these ones. Spirit of the living God, I commend you. Even to the young ones, I pray that you strengthen them by your power. Keep them, O oh God. Let their salvation be genuine. Let their experiences be authentic in the name that is above all names. The mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, thank you very much. In one minute, I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just, just look back. You'll see them. They'll have your details and you'll come back. Okay? Quickly appreciate them. Celebrate. To pass on that day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be lifted and all nations shall draw. Lift up your voice and prophesy. A day that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. Come on, pray. You are the strong ones. You are not the weak ones again. Come on, stretch your spirit. It's not that difficult again. You have grown past that level. You are now higher. You are now higher. It cannot be that difficult. You have broken the barriers of the flesh and the limitations that keep you down. The fountain has been broken in your spirit already. It only flows like a river. Even if you have been playing for 21 days, something will happen to your life. Even if you have been playing for 21 days, even if you have been joking for 21 days, you cannot be the same. Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Look at me. There is a difference between power and authority. Are you listening to me? Power is your ability. Authority is a position. Are you listening to me? And so a weak person who is a general can speak to the tallest man in the earth. That man has power, but he does not have authority. Are you listening to me? And there is one thing to function in the realm of power in the spirit. But there is another thing to rise to a level of authority. Authority. I have given you authority over all the powers. They have power. But authority controls. Hallelujah. Said I have given you authority. It's not about ability. Authority does not talk of ability. Authority talks of a position. Hallelujah. 
I don't know about you, but I know I can never be the same. This is not just Pentecostal confession, no. There is a way your spirit, your soul, and your body will know that a door has been opened up to you. And when Daniel set himself to pray from the first day, Bible says he cried unto the Lord. And while the angel of the Lord was bringing his answer, the Bible says the prince of the territory of Persia stopped Daniel and withstood him 20 and 1 day hallelujah and the bible makes us to understand that he traveled for 21 days and after that 21 days the bible says michael was sent and he said i am come to give thee understanding listen to me even if you have been playing you don't play so long and nothing will happen at least you'll be sick anything you do consistently will yield something hallelujah the freshness of his anointing in this place there is a way you know that a door has been opened in the spirit and this is what I feel in this place lift up your hands everybody thank you just drink of the atmosphere of heaven there is a newness of his spirit and grace there is a newness of his anointing there is a freshness it's not the old wine for you cannot put a new wine in an old wine skin lift your hands and drink of the freshness of the spirit like the dew upon Hammond prevailing strength in the spirit that the nations will know that he standeth in the congregation of the mighty one have I not said that ye are gods and that all of you are children of the Most High? Lift up your hands and drink of the fruitness. Oh, let his glory flow. Let his glory flow by the authority of the kingdom. Let his glory flow. After 21 days, something should happen in your spirit, man. See his glory. There is a river that flows in this place whose streams make glad the city of God. There is a river that flows from the throne of Emmanuel bringing strength, bringing renewal, bringing power and enablement in the spirit. you are not the same again you can never be the same Thank you, Jesus. Worthy, we give you praise. Come on, just, just love him and bless his name. Let your spirit bring out new words. Tell him, Lord, you are majestic. I give you praise. Holy Spirit, we thank you. You are the force and the power behind this move. It is by your wisdom and authority. Bless him. Lord, I give you praise. Just love him for grace. Love him for strength. Love him for a new river. Of grace. Of power. For a new level in the spirit. For a new level of insight, you'll never be the same. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessing and honor. Blessing. 
Come on, worship him. And all to Jesus, the Lamb who was slain. Glory and power. captain of this training camp you are the one who is building and making for the nations will rejoice we are the remnant of the house of Jacob that will not defile ourselves but will bear root downward Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen to me. There are certain things that cannot be done by human efforts. It is exclusively the operation of the Spirit. For when you look at the mark of God, you will see the signature of the Spirit. And you will know that there is an invisible hand that is moving beyond the sight of men. When you see that which is born of the flesh, the Bible says it is flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit, it does not hail from this realm. It is superior and above. God is making a masterpiece out of your life. I'm telling you. Lord, we give you praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true. Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. How many of you know that you will never be the same again? For as soon as Zion travails, the Bible says she shall put forth a child. The Bible says, and there was wonder in heaven. The woman who was pregnant and was about to give birth to a man child. The Bible says, and a dragon stood waiting for her to give birth to that child. The Bible says that nature fought for that woman and she was taken by the hand of the spirit to a desert where she delivered safely. For there was the scepter of greatness upon that child. He said, the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. Jesus speaking said I saw Satan fall like lightning I saw Satan fall like lightning blessed be the name of the Lord Lord we just want to tell you thank you you are the one behind this move this revival this empowerment this equipping and to you be all the glory let no man glory in your presence you deserve the glory and we are not ashamed to declare that you have strengthened us you have been our Ebenezer you have helped us we are those who have enjoyed the help of the Lord thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah I'd like you to just walk around and hug 10 or 20 people give them a big hug and quickly come back to your seat hallelujah i'd like us to appreciate bishop stan for coordinating the prayer project come on please celebrate god's servant i thought you'd do better than that i thought you'd do better than that Salute you, God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. I will lift my voice and I will sing. I will sing holy. I will sing holy to my Lord and Savior my god and king i will sing holy will you help me sing holy i will praise the lord i will praise the lamb of god who sings upon the throne i will worship him and give the praise to him alone Oh, 
As you worship, holy. Now you look God. Are you Lord God? Sena masima na na seba ya na na. Sena na 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 makari ya da da da. What is the name? Sena da 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 da. Rosi kabari ya da da da. What is the name? You're holy. You are holy. You're holy Lord. Holy. Are you Lord God? Almighty, Almighty, what is the name? What is the name? Oh, How great is our God? Would you sing with me? How great is our God? And all the earth. You are the greatest of God, and every generation will declare your praise.
Let the name of the Lord be exalted. The Son of the Living God. There is a name. It's above every other name. The Bible says that the mention of that name. That's authority. That's not power. That's authority. The name that melts hey, Jesus. sicknesses, diseases. Jesus. That name that is a strong tower Jesus. that the righteous run to it and they are saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One more song. You are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. You are awesome, Lord. You are awesome in this place. Faithful God. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, you are awesome, Lord. You are awesome in this place. you please be seated hallelujah first chronicles chapter 12 I want to salute everyone for the sacrifice of this spiritual exercise for many of us this is the first time we're having to stretch our spirits this far but every time God begins to give unusual instructions it's because he wants to build you hallelujah to make a sign and a wonder out of you for there is a way generals are made in the spirit there is a process that opens up the gates of authority in the spirit. Hallelujah. Behind every glory there is a story. And you are writing your own story. You are having a testimony before God and before men. A testimony of sacrifice. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. Not every Christian. Them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Job was speaking and said there is a path which the eyes of the vulture has not seen and there is a path which the feet of the lion has not trodden upon. But when you walk with the Lord it will please him to grant you access that you will do business in deep waters. And you will walk in levels of authority. Can I tell you something? My greatest desire for every one of us is not just that we get blessed. It's not just that we receive breakthroughs. 
but that we come to know him as he is because when you truly know him he will become your life he will become everything hallelujah when you truly know him you will value him above everything Kononia is a place of intimacy where you will know God beyond the boundaries of religion the average Christian life just knows things about God listen to me it's one thing to know the word it's another thing to know the author there is a difference for when you see him as he is and you stand before him in glory and you worship him in the beauty of his majesty when you come to know who the Holy Spirit is beyond signs and wonders you come to a point where you stop being just a servant of God you stop being just a son of God you become a friend of God and he said shall I do anything and not reveal it to my friend Abraham there are certain secrets that only friends can know and I am desperate for you this is my highest desire in this life the testimony of Enoch and I I'm lost without you I like you to just hum this song in your spirit and I and I and I I love you beyond and above everything. And I, yeah. when you seek his presence, you will get the anointing. When you seek his presence, you will get everything. And I, yeah. I love your presence. I love your presence. And I, Like many people when I began my pursuit I was not looking for ministry I had no ambition tied to it I only wanted to see his face to seek his face and I will lock myself and I will worship in that secret place and his Shekinah the glory of his presence would come and wrap me and surround me and I will stand in that glory I will lift my hands in worship to know him was and is my highest priority I was not looking for power not fame not money not influence not all these things just to stand and worship him we need a generation of men and women who will love God beyond the things this is the portal that opens you up to a life of grace and you will carry his presence every fiber of your body will be a conductor of his glory and his anointing and when people stand close to you your life will attest to the fact that you have come out of the secret place the secret place is not the place for them he in the secret place of the most high shall abide and every time you come out of that secret place there is a touch of his presence upon your voice that your communication will carry the light and the power of the throne room that when you speak when will know that this is not a foreign voice there is the signature of his majesty upon your voice and then he can take any frail man make a sign and a wonder out of him 
our fathers of faith weak ordinary men in themselves but men who longed for his presence longed for his presence it's always been my desire and my ambition to push people into the presence of God there you will find preservation there you will find faith there you will find strength for the journey the psalmist understood this and he said create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me he said cast me not away from your presence and take not your holy spirit Catherine Kuman would sob and weep and say he's my best friend I have come to know the Holy Spirit as a friend. He has become my senior partner in life. I cannot do without him. It's his wisdom you see at work. It's his ability, the agency of the Spirit. The ability to understand the move of the Spirit part time. Oh, I long that we come into this realm of intimacy. I call every one of us above and beyond ministry and nominal christianity into a realm where his voice is no longer foreign where you know him as he is where he will walk with you where he will talk with you where he will show you the secrets of the kingdom where he will grant you access to the authority of the spirit then you will love the Lord with all your heart and indeed you will not trade anything for him and you will let nothing stand in his place not fame not power not money not prestige where there is no sacrifice your life becomes a living sacrifice at that point not even Satan can take advantage of your life again I call all of us into a higher realm of intimacy beyond signs and wonders beyond miracles and the manifestations of the anointing beyond knowing him as savior beyond tongues and prophecies and miracles and authority and spheres of influence there is a realm where you desire him hallelujah the Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. Walked with God. To see your face once again. To know your voice once again. That's my heart's desire. To walk with you. once again to feel your glory once again so we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet you are holy thou art holy there is none like you in your presence that is where I must be this is my testimony Lord I bow as I enter the throne room and I cast myself down at your feet I lay everything aside for you are holy thou art holy there is none there is none like you in your presence that is where I must be. I may walk miracles, oh Lord, but in your presence, 
that is where I must be. I thank you for the lifting and the glory, but in your presence, that is where I must be. Thank you for wisdom and grace, but in your presence, that is where I must be. Thank you for prosperity and increase and open doors, but in your presence, that is where I must be. Thank you for honor and grace, but in your presence, that is where I must be. In his presence, that is where we will be. That is the place of power. It's the place of encounter. It's the place of freshness. Where you will meet the Holy Spirit. And you will know him as a person. Not just a force. Where you will rise out of the shackles of religion. And come into a real experience. The God experience. The experience of his glory. The experience of his power. Where you will be mantled with his glory you will be a living carrier of his presence your spirit your soul your body will be saturated in the river of his presence and when men look at you they see a reflection of him in the glory i will stand i will stand and lift my hand in the glory I'll receive every miracle you have for me it's in your glory Lord in the glory I will stand will stand and lift my hands it's in the glory I'll receive every miracle you have for me for me hallelujah hallelujah The ancient understood the power of his presence and they sought him more than life and they ended up with everything we are looking for there is no man who seeks God and finds God alone you will find God and everything that makes him God hallelujah first Chronicles chapter 12 Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Can someone read a very loud reader? First Chronicles 12 verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the seasons, to know what Israel ought to do. Just sit down. God bless you. He says the children of Issachar. Which were men that had understanding. Please if I, if I can get amplified. I will be using amplified most of the time. He said they had what? Understanding of the times. It's one thing to know the times. But it's another thing to have an understanding. A comprehension. Hallelujah. I've told us again that activities in the earth realm are governed by times and seasons. And one of the greatest assets that a believer can have is the ability to comprehend times and seasons. One of the greatest tragedy in the church is we do not understand the timings of the spirit. But he said there are certain people, the children, the sons of Issachar, the Bible says they had 
understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do in other words there is something to do in every time and every season but until you understand the time you will not be empowered to know what to do hallelujah first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 Paul speaking to the church says but of the times and the seasons brethren I do not need to write to you again about this but of the times so Paul acknowledged the fact that there were times and seasons and when you understand he said but as okay you've taken it away unto the suitable times and the precise seasons and dates he says the suitable time and the precise season and one of the greatest indication of spiritual maturity is the ability to coincide with heavenly things in this realm. It is an amazing dimension of stability in the spirit. You can pray in tongues, you can work miracles, you can raise the dead, but the true proof of your spiritual stamina is the ability to shift with the cloud and to shift with the wind. Hallelujah but of the times and the seasons I do not need to write to you I want you to know that we are in a prophetic season as the church of Christ in Nigeria one of the reasons why people do not know what to do and are confused is because we do not even know what is the blueprint and the program of the spirit hallelujah and very sad and unfortunate there are many ministers preaching everything saying everything but we need to be captured in his glory such that our ears he said i will set i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 and i will see what the lord will say i will stand upon my watch set myself upon the tower hallelujah that you will hear what the lord is saying that you will emphasize what god is emphasizing that you will shift when he shifts that you will align it takes the Holy Ghost to be able to guide you to navigate but that is the secret of strength and consistency and grace and advancement in the spirit for you can eat the manna of yesterday and die today there is always a fresh manna for every day hallelujah this is one of the reasons why we need discernment hallelujah throughout the period of fasting one of the things that the lord was reminding me and saying emphasize this to the body of christ discernment it was by discernment we were able to understand that this is what the lord will have us do in this season hallelujah it's not just some kind of spiritual ambition discernment accuracy and precision walking with the spirit to understand the things that Israel ought to do hallelujah let me tell you what discernment is discernment is is an enablement of the spirit hallelujah it is a walking of the spirit upon your spirit upon your mind that grants you comprehension of times and seasons the motivations behind spiritual operations that you are able to look and understand what God is doing why he is doing what he's doing where he is going the ability to perceive and comprehend the movements of the spirit discernment hallelujah discernment helps you to perceive and to judge the happenings around you from a spiritual perspective you cannot use your carnal mind what is happening in nigeria for instance the church of god in nigeria what is happening in the church universal when you judge using your five senses you will make a big mistake because the things of the spirit are only judged from a spiritual plane hallelujah discernment grants you the ability to judge things from the realm of the spirit and make decisions on account of your spiritual judgment are you listening to me very important 
discernment helps you to receive the prophetic blueprint for the next phase of your life it takes discernment you see because god's purposes are eternal but his methods change and transit and your ability to understand the pattern of god for your life part time god can use a pattern and you get to a phase of your life where he will switch patterns and your ability to switch with him will grant you consistency otherwise you will stick and stay retarded are you listening to me discernment very very powerful and 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 you see the thing about patterns is this the pattern of god and his mode of operation is unique for every man that's the reason why you can receive the pattern that god gave a man for ministry and you will fail hallelujah it takes staying in the presence to receive not only the direction but the pattern he told moses in exodus chapter 40 i think from verse 16 he said ensure that the house is built according to pattern hope i'm right hallelujah discernment is one great thing we need to have discernment is not word of knowledge are you listening to me word of knowledge just gives you a comprehension of something about somebody's life discernment helps you to understand the operation of the spirit by discernment you can know not just the kind of anointing that is in a place but the degree to which that anointing is present and when that anointing lifts by discernment you can understand the flow of the spirit by discernment you can know when the holy spirit has stopped moving when you start one of the most difficult thing for a believer is to know when to stop moving it's easier to know when to start than to know when to stop discerning of spirits that you understand the language of the spirit for the season hallelujah and i believe that one of the things that prayer and fasting does is to increase our capacity to discern spiritual things because your organs of expression and interaction with the realm of the spirit are heightened and activated as you pray so you are able to comprehend the things of the spirit and to know what god is saying and why he's saying what he's saying one of the greatest tragedy for a man is for god to be moving and then the man is taking another journey it may look like god it may sound like god it may taste like God, but it will not have the signature of the freshness of God's presence. Hallelujah. Very important. Let me tell you one of the things that discernment does. Discernment helps you to understand the prophetic seasons of your life. To know when to stand. To know when to move. To know when... Are you listening to me? Discernment helps you to understand where the spirit of god is moving by time your spirit is activated and heightened and you can understand the voice and the language of the spirit at every given time it helps you to receive divine illumination for every season to know the people to know the anointings and to understand the geography of your season every time god called people and led them through seasons it was tied to geographical places god would tell a man for a certain season for a certain time god will have to send certain people because of certain new seasons there are he will send them i want you to understand that seasons are territorial in this realm one of the greatest disaster for a man is to understand god but not to understand the geography there is a geography that activates the anointing upon your life when Isaac was about to leave God said no 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 by discernment says stay back when other people were leaving running out of Egypt there was famine but God said for you this is my strategy for you and Isaac sold in that land and received that same year and hundredfold and the man was rich he worked strong he went further and the Philistines envied him hallelujah in fact the bible tells discernment to spiritual growth 
he says strong meat have for them who are of full age who by reason of use have exercised their spiritual senses to discern a man can stand and is speaking and you can discern whether this guy carries the identity of god or not he can quote scriptures from genesis to revelation but by discernment you will hear another sound in the spirit and you say this is not the sound that comes from the throne a man can look at your life and be giving you accurate prophecies but you can look at him and discern and know that no this guy is not using the power of god although what he's saying is accurate but this does not come from the spirit discernment to understand what israel ought to do lift your hands and say lord i receive discernment hallelujah praise god by way of rounding up the fasting i'll just talk about so many things to build and to admonish us please i expect you to be writing because some of the things that i'm going to share will make you a very strong sound matured christian hallelujah times and seasons second peter chapter 1 verse 12 peter was speaking and saying he said i will not be negligent to bring you in remembrance of these things although ye already know them and are already established in this present truth hallelujah it says that i will not be negligent we have okay we don't i will not be negligent you see let me tell you something as as a leader as a minister and this applies for all the pastors and the ministers here you have a responsibility not just to preach sermons but to raise and build people according to the pattern of the Lord. Not according to how you want. There is always a pattern. Hallelujah. And Paul said, I will not be negligent. And so some of the things I'll be sharing with you are very powerful keys that will grant you stability in the spirit. Hallelujah. First and foremost, I want to apologize okay it's here it says i will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things though ye know them and be established in the present truth that we could not finish up the prayers and all of that i had a lot of uh, response from different people hallelujah i saw someone post something on facebook and said something something bastard now you don't do that hallelujah only children do that up. hallelujah I want to speak on a few things that will help us and then I will reveal to us some of the things that the Lord has shown me hallelujah praise the Lord and then we'll pray I hope that we'll be out of here shortly the first thing I want to teach us tonight I feel a need to teach us because every one of us is stepping into levels of unusual greatness hallelujah yes there are three ways that god builds and lifts and glorifies a man never forget this especially for pastors number one the denou the divine pronouncement of god over the life of a man the divine pronouncement this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and he commanded the world to hear him when god commands the world to hear you no door can be shut again divine pronouncement god announces a man by himself hallelujah number two what the bible calls the works of the kingdom miracles signs wonders the manifestations of the spirit when the blind see the deaf hear the dead are raised the cripples are healed when there are deliverances breakthroughs increase there is a signature that god is signing hallelujah the Bible makes us understand that when Jesus preached and began to do mighty works, the Bible says his fame went abroad. Hallelujah. There's no man who will receive a miracle and keep quiet about it. When the man with the devils in gathering was healed and God told him, Jesus told him to keep quiet, he was too grateful to be quiet. The Bible says he ran to the Decapolis, 10 cities, and began to preach and to declare. When he met the Samaritan woman, she went and began to bring everyone 
So miracles, signs and wonders lift people. How many of us want the lifting of God? You must open up yourself to the manifestation of the Spirit. Many people have criticized miracles, criticized signs, criticized wonders. That's the reason why many people and ministries are stunted because they do not realize that it's God's spiritual agency for publicity. You announce the miracles, but you glorify the doer of the miracles. Hallelujah. Number three, which is something I need to teach us because many of us will not like it is challenges persecutions and oppositions hmm. hallelujah that one agency in the spirit that god uses to lift a man and to build him and to open up doors and bring him to a place of honor is challenges persecutions oppositions tonight I'm going to deliver us from a false mindset that we have been given about persecution and challenges. Hallelujah. When the Lord began to use me mightily for his glory, um, the first times I began to face persecution and challenges, you know, people had a problem with the manifestation of the Spirit in my life. Then was not like now that you just blow air and everybody falls down. Then if someone falls under the anointing, you will rush him to sick bay or something. Because the operation of the spirit was not very common. Hallelujah. And when all kinds of persecution, and several things came up, I was so bothered. I was so worried. And the Lord taught me this thing that I'm teaching you today. Hallelujah. One day I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why are some people advancing and growing in ministry and some others taunted? And God told me because they have refused to allow themselves to rise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hmm. James chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4. James chapter 1. Please, media, if you can help us so we save time and hurry up. James chapter 1. I just felt like touching this. I actually didn't prepare for this, but the Lord asked me to teach it. My brethren, two to four, really. My brethren, count it what? Say it again, count it. How, is God mad that you say you should count it all joy? You only rejoice about something good. Hallelujah. Count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations, verse three, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, verse four, but let patience have a perfect work. Why? That ye may be perfect, mature, and entire, wanting nothing. He said, brethren, when people begin to revile and persecute and say things, do not let it be a setback. Brethren, count it all joy. When you go through diverse temptations, he said, for this will yield patience and when patience has find full expression it will make you strong and it will make you a mature believer in matthew chapter 5 from verse 10 to 12 jesus was speaking his sermon on the mount and he said something very interesting matthew chapter 10 uh, 5 from verse 10 to 12 jesus said blessed can i have it on amplified hallelujah okay who has amplified okay blessed listen 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 to the beautiful description blessed and happy and enviably fortunate fortunate to be criticized <laughs> to be persecuted and spiritually what in the state in which the born again child of god enjoys and finds satisfaction in god's favor and salvation regardless of his outward condition are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for being and doing what is right for theirs is the kingdom of heaven verse 11 he says blessed let me just jump all those things are you when men revile you 
and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account verse 12 it says be glad again rejoice so how is a believer supposed to respond come on i'm training you you will be strong you will you will, it will happen to you no 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 listen listen it's not a prophecy that's how this life was designed it's sad but it's true so i'm training you be glad and supremely joyful the kind of joy that will make you sing Agidigbae for being persecuted hey. for your reward in heaven is great strong and intense he said for in the same way people persecuted the prophets who were born before you in other words you are not the first person are you listening to me others have walked the earth There are so many believers that have not been trained to build stamina. We only know how to teach people how to be successful, but we don't teach them how to manage success. When you get to the realm of success, you will find out that it's a whole new world in its own. Are you listening to me? You used to dress and nobody talked about your dressing. Suddenly God bless you and every dressing now becomes an issue of discussion. Are you listening to me i want you to be strong and mature believers there is a blessedness that only challenges criticism and persecution can bring in your life if you run away from challenges if you run away from persecution if you run away from criticism you have run away from glory and greatness you will never be great that way are you listening to me you must have a healthy perception there are many of us who are running angry with everybody my roommates always talking <laughs> welcome to the realm of greatness if god is training you to be great then you must learn how to build stamina and work i'll tell you a few things about challenges and persecution that will bless you number one persecution and challenges test your loyalty to your vision that's the only test of your loyalty and commitment hallelujah when you are persecuted when you go through challenges it tests loyalty you never know whether you really believe in your vision or the grace of God upon your life until challenges come it tests your loyalty there are many believers that fall by the wayside listen look up let me give you a little advice tonight I deliver you from the pressure of trying to get a good name from everybody are you listening to me see when I started out with God I wanted to do everything to have a good name to counsel people at the right time sometimes you can ask them around two or three i will be going to my room and somebody will call and say i have a challenge i'm around chapel where are you and when i'm tired the person will say did god not call you and i feel guilty and i say lord it's a privilege that i have this anointing and i go back and one day god told me son it's time to grow up you will never please everybody satan is not pleasing everybody jesus is not pleasing everybody you will not are you listening to me tonight's teaching will make you a matured believer stop it many of us kill ourselves trying to get a good name from everybody let me tell you something your best is still not good enough Jesus walked upon the earth and from the day he was born till the day he went to heaven in fact till today there are people who are still paying to say Jesus is not Lord but does that stop him from being Lord and one day every tongue will see men of God try to buy newspaper and write no the power is real I'm telling you you people should just agree with me Am I blessing you? 
there are many people today you know i was joking I, I think i was sharing with someone and i was saying my name means many things to many people for some people joshua selman means king of kings and lord of lords for some people joshua selman means elijah for some people joshua selman means belzebub <laughs> the prince of demons hallelujah many of us have almost weighed ourselves down with the pressure of trying to present a nice image no 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 my i cooked this food please try to understand you will wear yourself are you listening to me you will wear yourself When you learn to embrace loyalty proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 would we'll, we'll run through certain scriptures please let's hurry up with this this is really not my emphasis i just want to teach us this is important i have a responsibility under god to teach us how to manage success and how to become strong proverbs chapter 24 can we have that it says if you faint in the day of adversity was the that's a diagnosis he says when men begin to criticize and persecute you if you fall what is the diagnosis he said you have strength though what is small if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small that's why we are fasting and praying to build capacity so that even if it's your father that looks at you and says do you know you're a failure all this your jesus thing We'll see who will come and marry you with this your Jesus thing. The Bible says, if you fail in that day, your strength is small. Let me show you one more scripture. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Challenges test your loyalty and your commitment. Jesus said unto them, No man, listen, no man who puts his hand to the plow and look back to the things behind his feet for what? Are you listening to me there are so many of us if you wanted to write a book simply because you went to the bookstore god told you to write a book and you went to find out from a publisher and he looked at you he asked you a few questions you could not answer he said you are not ashamed you want to write a book and you go back and you are crying stand up and wipe your tears there are better things to do are you listening to me number two challenges persecutions and criticisms they make you absolutely dependent they build your trust in God and in the Spirit of God you will never be able to truly trust God until you are in the midst of challenges and persecution and then you will know that truly vain is the strength of a man without God are you listening to me let me give you scriptures for that I prepared these scriptures for you Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 to 8 that's the only one we'll read but I'll give you two first Samuel chapter 2 verse 9 this was the prayer of Hannah let's let's look at first Samuel first Samuel chapter 2 verse 9 this was the prayer of Hannah Hannah loved God so much Penina laughed at her things didn't work well for her she kept praying and traveling and when God blessed her she left something she said he will guard the feet of his godly ones but the wicked shall be silenced and perish in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. It says, not by power, not by might. You see this ministry thing, pastors, listen to me carefully. Let me tell you something. You really, really want to do ministry, you must be able to stand and realize that persecutions... Do you know the Bible says he who has... Who denies and follows me will get what cars houses all of this and he added a little statement we have removed in our new translations of the bible he said with persecution hallelujah number three challenges and persecutions this is one of the biggest advantages it gives you a testimony before God and before men challenges and persecutions let me tell you something there is nothing as noble as having a testimony 
of steadfastness before God and before men. The Bible speaking about Enoch in the book of Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. It says for Enoch walked with God and he was not. And then he said for before he left, he had a testimony that he walked with God. Hallelujah. He said he had his testimony that he pleased God. Enoch had a testimony. Challenges and persecutions give you a testimony. Are you listening to me? Oh, it's a testimony. Next time when you're singing, this is the testimony. Certain songs will stop being special numbers. They will become your experience. It gives you a testimony before God and before men. realize you never talk about failures failures don't get persecuted what for they are already failures those who are behind and the lower echelons of life never get to be talked about so talking about you is a sign that there is something in your life that is worth noting are you listening to me if 10 people are talking about you regardless of what they are saying there must be something about your life that can command an attention and become a subject of discussion job chapter 1 verse 8 the bible says the sons of god gathered and satan was in the midst of them and there was the testimony of a man that was being discussed he said have you considered my servant Job chapter 1 verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? Here is his testimony. That there is none like him in the earth. This must have been proven with time. Are you listening to me? A testimony is a track record that is built over time. There is none like him in the earth. A perfect and upright man. One that feared God and ensured evil. This is the testimony of a man. God himself is sharing a testimony in the presence of Satan. What is God saying about you in the realm of the spirit? What is the testimony that you hold before principalities and powers? Listen, let me tell you, there are certain people that command great authority in the spirit. Do you know why? Because they have a testimony. Devils don't joke with them. Every time they enter a territory, the archives are open in the realm of the spirit and they have a testimony. If you have no testimony, you have no authority in the spirit. Are you listening to me? Persecutions give you an opportunity to have a testimony. Number four. Persecutions and challenges and criticisms they bring separations and prunings this is a very powerful thing persecutions bring separation can i tell you something look at me i learned this law i thank god that i learned this early in life and i want to teach you please look up everybody you will be deceived if you just know people for one year two months three months five months and they sing praises about you and you go around smiling and say they like me i want to give you a revelation tonight not true it's not easy for a man to like you it takes years of building a track record to end the loyalty of men men are selfish by nature and they love you to the degree to which you are meeting their needs the day you don't meet their needs you will see the loyalty learn this early in life are you listening to me I mean persecutions they bring a separation the Bible says when Jesus started out in ministry what happened suddenly signs and wonders and miracles and there were 5,000 people no publicity everybody came to a point that when he multiplied five loaves and two fish they said Lila will make you our king today can you imagine Jesus said mm, I know your heart you don't want to make me a king you want bread all the time because you have found that I can eat. Do you realize that it was still those 5,000 people who joined the Roman soldier to say, crucify him, release Barabbas for us. And Jesus looked at them. They said, crucify him, 
Let his blood be upon our, ch our children. Persecutions and criticism is like a magnetic field that separates people and helps you to scan through the innate sincerity. That's why before God will use a man, there is a process that will test your loyalty unto God. Hallelujah. This is mature stuff tonight, friends. It will make you strong in the spirit. So one day Jesus was preaching. <laughs> Let me show you something very powerful that happened. John chapter 60. John chapter 6, sorry. From verse 60 to 69, but my emphasis will be verse 65 or so. John 6. Just give me verse 65. Okay, hold on, hold on. It says, many therefore of his disciples, I'll read it down. When they had heard this, what is the this? His teachings, his life, his works. He says, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Next verse. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? Now, this was not just the 12 disciples. This was many other people. All right, 63. Okay, verse, just give me 65 if you can. 65 and he said therefore therefore said i unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him by my father 66 from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him these were the people who were remember there was a time jesus's mother wanted to see him they said lila we will stop you from even the mother from seeing him 67 then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will you also go away? I mean, Jesus looked at them and said, I'm surprised you are still staying. Why are you not gone? And Peter said something profound in 68. And Simon Peter answered him. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? He said, Thou hast the words of eternal life. Persecutions and criticisms separate people into different classes and gives you the opportunity to see the sincerity that is resident behind the minds of people don't be too fast when people begin to clap and say David killed 10,000 Saul killed 1,000 you will be surprised because it takes a season of building a track record to earn genuine loyalty from people people are selfish by nature are you listening to me and the degree to which you are able to appeal to that need are you listening to me when I hear people who have never seen me talking, I say, Joss is a nice person. He's such a glorious person. He's humble. In my mind, I say, it's a lie. You have never seen me when I'm angry. You don't know how I manage challenges. You have never seen me shouting at someone. Do you really love me? Is it true? Hallelujah. Verse 5. One of the biggest things that persecutions and criticisms do it helps you it brings about prophetic shiftings and alignments please get this oftentimes when certain periods of prophetic shiftings and alignments come in your life god uses these opportunities spiritual alignments geographical alignment how many of you know that it was persecution that scattered the church and then it scattered them and they went into several territories samaria and so on and then they began to do certain things for the kingdom it brings prophetic shifting shiftings in your insight and your understanding of spiritual things prophetic shiftings when persecutions happen like this in the midst of it as you are managing it you encounter certain people the bible calls destiny helpers never forget this hallelujah genesis chapter 37 the bible makes us to understand in verse 27 and 28 how that joseph joseph was a nice person he had a dream. He knew he was going to get great. He saw the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowing down. How would this happen? The Bible says one day, 
he just went to visit his brothers and something happened in verse 27 and 28 the bible makes us understand that his brothers conspired and they wanted to kill him they said come let us sell him when they threw him in the well can you imagine little did joseph know that those persecutions were what shifting him geographically to his prophetic destiny he says let us sell him to the ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother our flesh and his brethren were content verse 28 then they were passed by midianites uh, by midianites uh, the merchant men and they drew and lifted up joseph out of the pit and sold joseph to the ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they bought joseph into egypt how many of you know egypt was the place of his blessing it looked like the place of disaster but there was a prophetic shifting persecutions navigate you to the place of your destiny if you know how to perceive right you may be moving in what you call confusion but at the end of it you will know that it was the finger of the Lord directing you to the place of destiny hallelujah in first Samuel chapter 9 from verse 2 to 27 we will not read all of that the Bible tells us about Saul the son of Kish the Bible says for no reason his father's donkey got missing and what happened the father told Saul to go with one or two of the servants he said they should go and look for the donkey challenges arose what happened Saul began to navigate to the place of destiny he got to a point that he was weary and he said let's go back they said no there is a prophet are you seeing that no go there is a prophet so it wasn't about the donkey it was about an anointing and the bible says saul went to a point that when they directed him and they said go to this city a prophet usually comes and saul stood in front of his miracle samuel and he did not know it was challenges looking for his father's donkey he needed the intervention of a prophet and that was how he met the prophet and god had already told the prophet that saul was coming and he took Saul, he anointed Saul, and Saul became the king. Be careful what you drive away from your life in the name of persecution. Some of it can be the prayers you have been praying. It's only coming in a package that is not nice. It will take you to be uh, being a spiritual man to receive it. And that's why I talked about discernment. That you can look and say, Lord, what meaneth this? And when you look, you will see the glory of God. You will see the beauty of God. You will see the hand of God. And then you can smile. Are you listening to me? Many of our parents, for righteousness sake, were driven out of office. Are you listening to me? Until today, they hate God. They are talking, they are insulting. If you tell them, go to church, they will say, may God punish you. The God who could not help me, you are him. Two of you go to hell. Are you listening to me you may be doing something that maybe will bless and honor you other people are doing it when you are about to go into it God will say no for you is exempted Mazi prosper is doing this and that for you is exempted you are writing the book let me tell you something I wrote a book some years ago not guilty you know about the book I wrote that book many years ago I edited it many times to publish this book I wanted to publish it one time God said no way to publish it one time God said no way and today knowing what I know I would have laughed at myself if I had published that book are you listening to me do you see a miracle in every persecution that comes in every challenge that comes and this is for ministers because they will talk about you you will see your name on papers and see a woman you know nothing about just a true confession my name is Afiniki Joshua Selman met me somewhere ah yeah blessed be the name of the Lord oh no say Manasseh oh say Manasseh yeah expose the secret of his anointing they will show Photoshop anybody can do anything come on you've got to be strong are you listening to me you are in the office you suddenly see people frowning at you and somebody say where is the check bring it just bring it and let's stop arguing he said what check say bring it we are finished talking the owner has confessed he said you are the one that carried it and then you turn back 
I begin to cry. No, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Because that is the making of a miracle. They are the ingredients on the left hand side that bring you a miracle. Are you listening to me? When you learn this, you will remain young and you will remain fresh. And you will not kill yourself before your time. Ah, help us dear Lord. Hallelujah. Job, for reasons he could not understand, went through all kinds of challenges in one day. And the Bible says Job's wife looked at him and said, are you still maintaining your integrity? Will you not curse God and die? Job said, ah, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? The Bible says, and Job sinned not. So all of those cause you God. You have caused God. You have caused the man of God that prayed for you that didn't bring the miracle. You have caused everybody. Repent tonight and be matured. Tell your neighbor, grow up. Hallelujah. See, if you receive this teaching and you walk with it, I promise you it will make you great. Are you listening to me? And so you laugh. You laugh. When many of you were asking questions, say, ah, what happened? Why? What? This? No, 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 no. Don't do that. Make sure your love is always intact. When anything affects your love life and your joy life, you are dead. Are you listening to me? Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I maintain love and joy. It's the secret to the anointing. Years ago, God showed me a vision. Let me share with you something. And I saw a host, just a host like this. I was going for a ministration some years ago. And someone really spoiled my mind. And I, I was almost, it was almost just one hour to the time. And I had a vision. I saw a big host, you know, that you pass water through. And I noticed that the tap was rushing seriously. But then at the end of the host, I just saw droplets of water coming. And I said, Lord, what is this? When God shows me a vision and I don't understand, I calm down because soon he will bring the explanation. Are you following me now? And then God told me to look in between and I saw many stones inside. Big stones, small stones and God told me these things block the flow of my glory and the anointing. Bitterness, unforgiveness. Are you listening to me, saints of God? You want to love God, you want to walk in power, you want to see miracles, if not one day you will tell somebody rise up and walk and you are the one who will see that in his position are you getting blessed tonight say after me i'm growing i'm becoming matured so change your perception on persecutions it is a blessing not a curse are you listening to me it's a great blessing and not a curse for every time you are persecuted God see if you are persecuted and you turn back and begin to do certain things maybe you know fight back or do this I was sharing with someone I can't remember who let me tell you you have killed the miracle see this attitude I'm teaching you makes you weak in this realm but I, 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 I sent a post on Facebook you will command great strength in the spirit when they talked about Jesus Christ he said nothing he just moved there is nothing as painful as persecuting a man and he replies you by keeping quiet it makes you look stupid it makes you look foolish and after a while somebody will ask you a question and say don't you have something else to do with your life this person is there moving and you are here talking does this affect you you must learn to be strong Say after me, I am strong. I am immovable. Because there are many of us right now seated that have not been able to move to next le the next levels of our lives. I shared with you some time ago. Let me use this to wrap up uh, just this session of what I'm saying. There are three fears you must conquer in life to be great. Number one is the fear of the past. The fear of the past. Our past haunts us. You were an armed robber in the past. So what? So what? Bible says, therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Religion can haunt your past. We were all kinds of things in the past. <laughs> all kinds. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You know what you were in the past. And every time God wants to lift you, the voice of your past holds you back. It is a fear you must conquer tonight. The second fear 
is the fear listen to me the fear that comes with ignorance you never be confident until you are competent are you listening to me incompetence brings fear you are always afraid when you do not know and the, the, the antidote to that is not prayer and fasting knowledge get knowledge get understanding the last one which is the biggest one is the fear of the opinion of others about you listen to me no matter how nice you try to become men will have their interpretations about you the most important thing is what God is saying about you are you listening to me you must have this otherwise one day somebody will look at your child and say can you imagine he's a man of God how can a child be wearing red socks and you go by I can cry and say I thought I like red socks all kinds of challenges but you must learn say after me I conquer the fear that comes with opinions about me I know who I am saved by the spirit I know who I am I know who God has made me do you know why many people are afraid of what people will say because you think it's their right comments that brought you the honor and so you are afraid that if they if they begin to talk negatively the honor will go away the Bible says no man take this honor to himself it is God that can take a man from a dung hill and put him are you listening to me this is why pride is very dangerous because when you fall whatever brought you up is what whatever brought you up is what will sustain you are you listening to me pride is a dangerous thing because when you become boastful and arrogant you will be under pressure that's why many people surround themselves with psychophants who cannot tell them the truth because they have to maintain an atmosphere that makes them feel like the honor is still there and the moment somebody begins to say look there is need for change what happens the honor begins to be threatened in them and then they begin to respond are you listening to me very very powerful honor comes from the Lord are you listening to me it doesn't just come from what you the Bible says Hannah speaking it is God that killeth it is God that make it alive have you not seen people who have fasted and prayed more than you and they have not stepped into one tenth of the honor upon your life I have seen people that know the word of God more than me I have seen people that are more diligent in the things of the spirit but the position I occupy today is an election of grace it's an election Paul said Paul he said I am the least of all the brethren but it has pleased God are you listening to me so realize that every time you see honor in your life it came by grace it will be sustained by grace are you listening to me when you have this you will have an open heart to receive criticism from others and not get angry many ministers are afraid Whenever people begin to tell you, maybe there is an area of your life, adjust or this, they get afraid because they want to surround themselves by only people who are psychophants and liars. Can I tell you something? The moment you become prosperous or you begin to have results, whether in life and ministry, let me shock you. The people who were there when you were nothing, listen to them when you rise because they have nothing to gain. Are you listening to me? Those who do not know you when you were nothing, they will only speak the things that you want to hear are you listening to me are you learning something this night those who were there when you were nothing when they tell you something listen because you were there when there was nothing that would corrupt your sincerity but now there is reputation you are flying to UK the Caribbean you just came back dashed down through Brazil came back and then let me tell you something with greatness greatness attracts all kinds of people mostly psychophants people who are driven by their lust and selfishness whose God is their belly they will tell you what you want to hear they will prophesy what you want to hear they will... that's why the kings of the earth had all kinds of liars are you listening to me politicians today have this as a big problem they don't even trust their friends again you know why because all their friends are liars 
a man is eating money somebody will come and tell you he said you are doing a great work in this local government and the person says as you are going just pass through the other parlor that is the that is the drug that will soon bring you down whenever you are getting great in life surround yourself with the people who knew you when you were nothing and value the things that they will tell you when you surround yourself with psychophants, they will lie to you. Guess what? The day you fall, they will run and leave you and call others and say, come and see him. <laughs> man, man. God looked at man and scanned to and said, the heart of man is wicked. When God gives a verdict, respect it. Hallelujah. So what is about to happen to us as a family of faith in this season? Very quickly. Amos chapter 3 verse 8. Amos chapter 3 verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? Verse 9. Go to verse 7. Sorry, I'm looking for verse 7. Yes, this is it. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. But revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. It doesn't just mean those who are called into the prophetic office. Those who are interested in staying in the secret. He said there is nothing the Lord will do in this realm that he will not reveal to somebody. So if there is scarceness of the word, it's because there is scarceness of men who can pay the price to stay in the presence of God. Are you listening to me? Matthew chapter 10 verse 27. He says, that which I declare to thee in the dark declared in the light and that which i tell you in secret declared thou on the mountaintop i told us at the beginning of the year that the lord said okay what i tell you in darkness that speak ye in the light that means what you got from your secret place the dealings of the spirit he says and that which you hear in the air that preach it upon the mountaintop because it will come to pass hallelujah the lord told me seven things that is happening to us write it please it's very important number one the lord told me that we're stepping into a new order of the operation of the spirit a new order you will see the operation of the spirit in koinonia and eni like you have never seen before whatever you think you have seen before is only a tip of the iceberg miracles signs and wonders joel 2 23 and john chapter 1 verse 50 and 51 don't don't put it up that's number one number two the lord told me that we are stepping into an unusual dimension of influence and access unusual dimension of influence and access access to kings access to nobles access to great people first samuel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 you can read that up i'm just giving you all of this because we have to round up unusual dimensions of influence and access number three god told me there's going to be a freshness of the word of god in our midst of the teaching anointing it will come with power it will come with grace seasoned with fire like never before to cause transformation Number four, the Lord told me we are stepping into a mighty order of favor, wealth, and prosperity. Write this, favor, wealth, and prosperity. Genesis chapter 28 from verse 12 to 4. The Bible says, and God blessed him, talking about Isaac, and he worked strong. He was great. He moved forward to the point that the Philistines envied him. Hallelujah. Fearful order of favor. Let me use the opportunity and announce it right now. We, we were in Lagos for a meeting by the grace of God. And after the meeting, a woman walked up to me and she gave E and I a plot of land in Lekki in Lagos. Hallelujah. 
Now that's a miracle. I say it because we are all benefactors. This is not Joshua Selman. Are you listening to me? This is the joy of everyone. This must be the hand of God. I know nobody from Jack giving you a plot of land in Lekki. Those of you who live in Lagos, you know the implication of that. This is how God can take a man. No God's father, no nothing. I've said this thing. I know no man after the flesh that I'll say, okay, without this man, I will not. No, take your eyes off men. I've said this thing again and again. Every man can, is the best of every man is a man. But when God is set to lift you, when God is set to lift you, I'm sharing these testimonies to the glory of God. About two or three months ago, I was staying when um, one of us who works with CBN, you know, got to talk to them about me and CBN Africa said they wanted to come and do an interview, you know, and, and, and just their documentary that they put and they are airing it around the world. And they came to Zaria for a period of a week. They interviewed a few people and all of this. And now they are preparing a program and publicizing it around the world. I was told that it will be aired in over 60 channels. A comprehensive documentary that was done on me. Are you listening to me? How do you explain this? All this connection, take my ministry card, do this, do that. There is an honor that only comes from God. If God does not give you, you don't have it. You can pretend it. You can look like it. It's not there. This ministry has been honored by God. Not because we have been the, not because we are the best. But there is an honor. There is an aura of his presence. There is royalty. A ring of royalty that he brings. The shout of a king in the midst of his people. But this is just the beginning. You will see fearful testimonies for you and for your loved ones. Please, I want you to believe it. That someone will get up and build a house and just walk and say, Stanley, the Lord gave me an instruction. Believe this, oh. Believe this. The Bible says we are not them that draw back. The Lord told me there will be restoration and divine acceleration in fact these were the exact words that came to me that there will be grace for execution of divine ideas god said like never before grace upon people to run with the ideas and the visions that he has given them that all the walls of limitations is it a book to write is it a place to go is it a business to start whatever it is grace uncommon and unusual acceleration this is not what will happen next year is what we have already stepped into but the performance is only for them that believe number six a new level of authority in the spirit i had a dream this morning i called tosin as early as i think it was 6 30 and i called i said tosin please tell me the meaning of something in yoruba and this was a dream let me share it with you we were in a place, it was here and I, and it, the crowd, it, it looked like a church. Bigger than this place. By far, bigger. Alright? And then there were some women. I think it looked like it was a Thanksgiving or something. And there were some women, and the women held e and I posters on their hand. And it's like they were going to go and paste it all over the city. Women. Elderly women. And so, you know how they come and dance around the church. So, they wanted to come and dance. It was their turn to dance. Are you listening to me? You know how Thanksgiving is in the church. Other people will go and join them. And so I saw many people in the queue. And I remember I was sharing with Tosin. She was there. And they were about to raise a song. It was Sheun that was going to raise a song. I follow me now. And then Tosin was signaling him that this was a song that the women were going to sing first before they go and, and uh, post the ENI posters. And this, the song was higher, higher than, um, oh my God, a Yoruba word. What is the meaning of the Yoruba word? Can you remember? Big or something. It means um, the Lord is taking me higher. That was the song they were singing in Yoruba. They would say higher, higher. Then they would sing the song, taking me forward in Yoruba and everybody was dancing and I woke up this morning that's why when I came up I said you are moving higher I wasn't just motivating you are you listening to me this is what God is doing by himself this is not ENI is not it's not a group is you 
are you listening to me when god is saying he's doing something he's talking about you say i believe and i receive and the last thing that the lord is doing is that he's enlarging our territory of influence and our sphere of influence when god honors a man when you prove yourself faithful what happens is that god anoints you and he blesses you then he enlarges your sphere of influence look up please if you ever find yourself walking beyond your sphere of influence is dangerous for every season there is a sphere of influence are you listening to me that's why we walk only within the framework of the instructions that god has given us a lot of people have met me why can't we start a tv ministry why can't we start this why can't we start publication why can't we start this can i tell you something i never do anything until god speaks no matter how long no matter how long are you listening to me you must learn it but it has pleased god in this season to open us up to unusual dimensions our tentacles have broadened in the spirit your 21 days of praying and you are enlarging and building capacity and you will see it reflect in your life very quickly before we round up second peter chapter 3 verse 11 says what what kind of men do we are we supposed to be in light of these things very quickly i'll give you five things that the lord requires of you number one maintain unconditional love and joy i've said it you must maintain it unconditional love say after me i have love towards god and towards my fellow man matthew chapter 4 from verse 43 to 48 write it please make sure you meditate on these scriptures isaiah chapter 2 verse 3 talks about with joy you will draw out of the wells of salvation first peter chapter 4 from verse 8 proverbs chapter 18 verse 14 the bible says a broken spirit who can bear never allow anything affect your love look at me learn to let go say after me i learn to let go there are many of us that choke ourselves with too many useless things this person offended me this person did this 15 years ago this person offended my father and our clan and they told us don't laugh with these people again see when you don't set yourself free it's a demonic stronghold tell yourself i receive power to let down power to release refuse to have enemies in your life it's a choice when you hear and people say they talk about you say look i let go i let go i let go let it just go. let it go it's a sign of great maturity i refuse i don't have enemies in my life because when you do you are the one who will be at a disadvantage number two quickly refuse offense bitterness and unforgiveness god told me this again and again Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 Titus chapter 3 verse 9 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 and 32 refuse offense the Bible says in that day many shall be offended refuse offense refuse it is a choice there are many of us that every little thing annoys you every little thing annoys you this person said this how can she embarrass me in front of this guy he doesn't know the guy has been looking at me eh? look at this kind of embarrassment just looked at me and said have you washed your black pot can't you let go everybody do like this just say let go say it again let go say i let go you choke yourself refuse the things that choke his grace upon your life refuse it find a reason not to be bitter or, or, or offended or have unforgiveness no you are at a losing end you give the devil a foothold into your life and let me tell you you will wreck your life the disaster will be it will not be worth it are you listening to me number three increase your capacity in the place of prayer like bishop stan said do not allow the 21 days to just end let it put a fire for prayer in your spirit increase capacity number four hold steadfastly 
to the truths and the principles you have learned keep the word of god in your heart and in your lips pastor chris will say keep saying it keep what keep speaking it don't stop saying it powerful keep saying it never stop speaking it no matter what happens to you maintain your profession the bible says that um, hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 he said we should hold fast our profession of faith hold it fast it can slip away you can find yourself saying things that you're not supposed to say make sure that only words of blessing come out of your mouth only words of grace only words of comfort only words of increase only words of greatness it doesn't matter that you're offended you are permitted to cry but make sure only words of life i said before you this day blessing and cursing life and death but i advise you do what choose life joshua chapter 1 verse 8 talks about letting the word of god be in your mouth that you will have good success I refuse to let situations and circumstances change my confession about what God has said about me. I refuse it. You must refuse it. And finally, you must maintain an atmosphere of thanksgiving. God bless you. Appreciate the worship team. I like the way we took our... Come on, please appreciate them. I know you're writing. I like the rejoicing. The Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. It says, you should give thanks always for this is the will of God. The will of God is not the situation you are in. The will of God is the fact that you should give thanks in all situations. You must learn to give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In how many things? How many things? All things maintain a life of thanksgiving that you say lord i thank you your supervisor insults you and tells you you're a failure in this life and brings out your script and you see nine over 60 and you see a carryover it's sad you are crying but you go back and say lord i give you thanks i give you thanks i choose to thank you ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 final scripture you must learn to give thanks brothers and sisters if you abide by all the things that i've taught you today it will make you a fearful sign and a wonder and people will look at your life and say what manner of man are you there is the revelation of god's word that sets you above it makes you a christian indeed are you listening to me it makes you a christian in reality in anointing in character in grace and you will see the way the beauty of the lord will rise upon you and the favor and the blessing of God will come upon you we're going to pray for one minute as we round up rise up on your feet this is the making of generals take tonight's teaching meditate upon it repent over the things you need to repent in. tell yourself I stop being bitter I stop trying to please everybody I walk by the principles of God. Hallelujah. We are going to take just three prayer points and then we are out. Prayer point number one. You are going to say, Lord, grant me discernment in this season. Lift up your voice and pray. Discernment. We have just one minute, so make sure you are praying. I receive discernment. This is the school of the spirit. Discernment. To know the times. To know seasons. And to know what I ought to do. Bakata parekete balanabosh. Ranta cross the banda kabash. Rakapate kete katabala kosuya. Make sure you are praying inside and outside. Discernment, oh God. In the name of Jesus. That I understand timings. That I know when God is moving. That I know when God stops. That I know the boundaries. That I know when a new season is open up to me. That I understand the prophetic shiftings of the spirit for my life. Go ahead and pray. Rabate kosotoma, rabasi kete, lekriente kosotoni alabai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to say, Lord, 
I receive grace and stamina to walk through persecution, criticisms, and receive them as a blessing and rejoice in the midst of them. Go ahead and pray. It's not a curse. I tell you, brothers and sisters, it's not a curse. It's for your lifting. It's for your glorification. Change your perception. Every true apostolic ministry, every true prophetic ministry cannot be void of persecution and criticism. When you want to become a real Christian, you will have to walk through. For glory to God, rejoice forever. Because in it, God is preparing a table. God is bringing honor. Change your perception. Celebrate persecution. Celebrate criticism. Celebrate challenges. They never come to kill you. They come to bring glory out of your life. Pray and say, Lord, grace. Grace to laugh. Grace to laugh. Grace to shout. Grace to rejoice. That I be not offended. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are going to pray now. And say, Lord, I receive grace to love. That my love, listen, listen, listen. I will just give you all the prayer points and then we'll round up. Grace to love, grace to remain joyful, and grace the power to let go. Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. There are too many. Make up your mind that you will never surround yourself with bitterness, anger, envy, backbiting, unforgiveness. They are dangerous. Make a vow tonight. Make a decision. Go ahead. Pray. I am too visionary to be bitter. Pray. Confess God's word. I maintain my love life. Nothing shakes my love for God and for people. Pray. I maintain my love life. I maintain my joy. I maintain my joy. I refuse offense. I refuse offense. I refuse offense. People can talk about me. They can talk about Iana. But we are rising with the glory of God. No offense. There is love. Pray. Say I love my persecutors. I love my enemies. I love, I love only. I refuse to hate. I cast hatred from my life. It cannot dwell. It cannot dwell. Only love reigns. Only love reigns. I refuse to be bitter. I refuse to be bitter. Only love. Only love. I am a true Christian. Only love. Pray and say tonight, I let go. I let go. I let go. I let go. Every offender, I let go. Every persecutor, I let go. Come on, pray. You will enjoy liberty. It's a higher law. It's the law of love. It's a higher law. It's the law of liberty. It's a higher law. It's a law of grace. I let go. I let go. I refuse offense. I refuse bitterness. I refuse it. The atmosphere of love saturates me. I have love. I love only. I love only. I have joy only. I only talk about the good of others. Grace to talk about the good of others. Grace to talk about the well-being of others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back and meditate on this. You will see victory in your life. You will see your strength be renewed. No high blood pressure. I can never have high blood pressure. Never. Never ever. Because the word of God grants you liberty. It teaches you how to handle the sword of the spirit in this realm. Let your joy remain. Let your peace remain. Run away from atmospheres that create bitterness and offense. No, no, never. 
you will be victorious. That way you will hear the Holy Spirit with precision. And his word will not be mingled with any flesh and bias in your spirit. You will walk in clarity and precision and accuracy. And then you will see the glory of the Lord rise in your life. I prophesy to you that you are walking in a new level of glory. I prophesy to you, you are walking in a new level of lifting. I prophesy to you, it's your season of great grace and glory. I prophesy to you, it's your season of great grace and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, inside and outside, this is your first time of worshiping with us here at Koinonia. Please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out quickly, quickly. We have a prayer for you. We're out of time. Appreciate them as they come inside and outside. We love you. Please clap for them. Appreciate them. Thank you very much, sir. All the way from Abuja. Appreciate them. They are coming. We love you inside and outside. Please appreciate them. We have a prayer for you. We value you. We love you. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. Don't stop clapping. Come on. God brought them. God brought them to be blessed. God brought them to be blessed. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for coming. How many of you are blessed tonight? Praise God. I pray that the word of God will find expression. We really celebrate you. Thank you so much for coming. And God bless those of you who invited many. Hallelujah. The Bible says they will shine like the stars that cast many to righteousness. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will bless you. That this will be the beginning of a new season in your life. Walk with these things that you have received. And they will make you great indeed. Hallelujah. Saints of God, let's stretch our hands and pray for them. We command a blessing upon you in the name of Jesus. We declare that you are walking upon your high places. Every challenge you came here with melts away. The love of God, the fellowship of the Spirit, the grace of God envelopes you. You leave this place in. 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 You leave this Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.